So you wanna learn how to play the One Piece trading card game. This video is intended for anybody that's new to the One Piece trading card game that is here to learn. At the end of this video, you should be able to learn what every card does in this game and how the overall game plays out. What we're gonna do first is talk about each specific detail of the card game and then we'll go ahead and showcase the gameplay as we progress through the tutorial. Before we do anything, we have to either rock, paper, scissors your opponent or roll a dice to see who goes first. In this example, let's say we get to go first. So now that we know who goes first and who goes second, you have to draw five, both players draw five cards. What you can do at this point, knowing if you go first or second before anything gets played, both players have to decide whether they wanna keep this hand or choose to mulligan. How you mulligan in this game is essentially put the cards back in your deck and shuffle them up and then redraw five cards. After you do that the second time, you can no longer mulligan for the rest of that game. Now that we've already have our hand, now add the five lives. You put lives face down in the life zone area. Two, three, four, and five. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So now that we're getting into the game here, we're gonna go ahead and showcase what you do on the phases of your turn. We'll go into the refresh phase, Nothing needs to be refreshed at the start of the game, so we immediately go into the draw phase. I will say, if you do go first, now here is an important part of the game. If you go first, you do not get to draw. If you go second, you do get to draw one. Then you go into the dawn phase. The dawn phase is where you get to flip your dawn and put it in the cost area. If you go first, you can only put one dawn in the cost area at the beginning of the game. Let's go ahead and showcase what the character has actually on the card. On the top left, you have your play cost, how much it costs for you to play. On the top right has your damage, how strong your card is. In this example, it's only 1000 strength. On the left, if you look closely, you can see on the left, there's a counter plus 1000. If your leader or your characters are getting attacked and they're lower damage than the attacking character or leader, you can place these cards from your hand and attach them to your character to give them a thousand buff. Other characters sometimes have counter plus 2000, which would give you a plus 2000 buff. Then also to note the type of character that this is. If you notice at the bottom of the name Nami, it shows that this character is a straw hat crew type. She's also red, so red matches the Monkey D. Luffy. You can only play red cards in your deck. Also to note in the character, there's also descriptions on the cards that have effects. They can only be activated when these characters are on the field. They cannot be activated in your hand, only on the field. In order to play a Nami for one, we're gonna need to what we call rest in this game. We're gonna need to rest one Don to play a Nami. And what's cool about Nami is that she has a main phase once per turn, give one rested Dawn card to your leader or one of your characters. Because we rested a Dawn in order to play her, her effect actually activates. I could give this Dawn to either her or Monkey D. Luffy. And what this is and why you do this is essentially Dawn give you a 1000 buff on the original damage that you have to this leader. For example, with a one Dawn card, this makes his damage 6,000 in strength. So then if this were your turn to swing, you could be able to swing for 6,000. However, players cannot attack on opening turn. So in this example, we have no more Dawn to use because Dawn's already been rested, so we can just pass our turn. So we'll just end our turn and pass over the blue team. Now we're going to go ahead and showcase what it looks like to go second. We'll do a refresh phase because this is the start of our turn and the start of our game. There's nothing to really be refreshed. So we immediately go into draw phase, which you draw one card on draw phase. Next, we're going to go into the Dawn phase where we're going to go ahead and activate two Dawn. If we go second, we can activate two Dawn cards and we put that in the cost area. So from my hand, if you can see here, I've got some options. I've got Jinbei, which costs two to play. Boa Hancock, she costs three to play, but we cannot play her since we only have two Dawn. We can play a 
Kuma, which is a two drop card. So for right now, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and rest two Don to play a two drop Kuma. Kuma has an on play effect. An on play effect means when you play this card directly from your hand onto the field, you can look at the top three cards of your deck and you can return them at the top or the bottom of your deck any order. When it says look, I do not need to reveal it to my opponent. I can just look. We'll go ahead and put this at the bottom of our deck in that order, for example. So now that we have already used two Dawn, we played a card here. Because this is our first turn, even though it's we're going second, it's still considered our first turn. We also cannot attack. So what we do is we'll go ahead and end turn and pass it over to the other player. So now we're passing it over to the red side. We'll go ahead and do what's called the refresh phase, which is basically unrest all the cards that are rested. And then we go into the dawn phase where you can activate two more dawn because this is now our official second turn. We are going to be activating two dawn every single time now in the dawn phase. Now we move over to the main phase where we can do a number of things here. What we can do is either play another character. This is where you got to get a little bit more strategic in the card game here. I can choose to play. I can choose to rest three dawn one, two and three and play a Nico Robin which is a three cost Don, which we rested. What's cool about this is I have a Nami that is now able to activate and a Monkey D. Luffy. Leader cards generally have effects. If you see Monkey D. Luffy's effect, it's essentially the same thing as Nami. This one says, give this leader or one of your characters one rested Don on once per turn. For this example, we're gonna go ahead and put it under Monkey D. Luffy. This is just the better strategic move since we want to give this guy a strong buff so we can go for a strong attack. Next, we'll go ahead and use Nami's effect. Give one rested Don card to your leader or one of your characters. Let's continue to put it under Monkey D. Luffy. What we're doing here is essentially making him stronger. So every Don we put underneath gives him a 1000 buff. So with the two down underneath and the 5,000 makes them a 7,000 attack. Okay. So what we're going to do now is now that it's our second turn, we are now able to declare attacks. We cannot attack opponent's characters that are unrested. In other words, untapped. If it's tapped or rested, we can attack that character. But because it's not, we cannot attack that character. But we can attack untapped or unrested leaders. So what we'll do here in this scenario is we'll go ahead and declare an attack over Crocodile at 7,000. So if you notice, Crocodile has a life of, or a damage of 5,000 when we have 7. So 7 is obviously greater than 5. So what happens in this situation is Crocodile is able to either take the hit or add counters to make him stronger than seven. For example, if he's declaring the attack at 7,000 on my 5,000, and I have cards such as Weevil, which is a counter plus 1,000, Jinbei, counter plus 1,000, Jinbei again, counter plus 1,000. That in total, if I play all three from my hand and say I activate counters, three counters, to my crocodile making him 8,000 monkey D being at 7,000 is not strong enough to hit my crocodile and therefore lose a life. The downside to doing that is you're using those characters to defend yourself to protect your life and then you have less cards in your hand. Part of the strategy of the game is your opponent not knowing what cards are in your hand and the less that you have of them the more aggressive that they're willing to grow into because of them being less chances of them being able to do counters. And because this one took three, we're gonna be able to block that Monkey D. Luffy's attack. But for this example, let's go ahead and not do that and put these cards back in our hand. That's just to kind of show you what you can do to counter at Monkey D. Luffy. Another scenario that a lot of people might not know, if the damage is equal, a life can still get taken out. In order to protect your life from getting taken out, you need to have 
more than equal. But for right now, as a blue player, we'll let this one go through. Then we go ahead into the life. So what we do is we take a look at our card and add it to our hand. Crocodile was hit. There is no trigger effect on this card so it just goes right to the hand and we're now at four lives now it's back to the blue player's turn so what we'll do is go ahead and use the refresh phase which will go ahead and unrest the dawn next we'll go into the draw phase which we will draw one activating two more dawn so now we're at four we'll go ahead and rest two dawn to play a Jinbei. Jinbei needs two Don to rest in order to play, and he's at 4,000. He cannot attack on this turn, but Bartholomew can attack and Crocodile can attack. We have two extra Don here. Instead of using the Don to rest and play another card, we can also do it this way where we can take a Don that is active, not rested, and put it underneath one of our characters or leaders. In this example, we'll go ahead and put it under Crocodile. Crocodile will now be at 6,000. Then we'll go ahead and activate another Don and put underneath Crocodile. That now makes him 7,000. So we've used our two active Don and we put it underneath Crocodile. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do, since we can't attack characters, we can attack the leaders still. We'll go ahead and declare an attack for 7,000 over Monkey D. Luffy. And so Monkey D. Luffy will essentially just take the hit. Here we hit Guard Point, which is an event card, and it also has a trigger effect. We can choose to activate this trigger effect or put it to hand. What its trigger effect says is your leader or one of your characters gains 1,000 power during this turn. But because I don't see any more attacks being made, I will go ahead and choose to add this to hand. And again, I do not need to show them what card it was. I just need to look at it for myself. Also keep in mind that Monkey D. Luffy was no longer at seven, only at five, for the reason that Dawn only give you a damage buff on your turn only. So it looks like we have no more Dawn to play. So what we'll do is end our turn and go into the end phase, passing it over to Team Red. Now we'll go ahead and go into the refresh phase. This is where we'll get to untap Monkey D, untap our Don, and detach any Don that was attached to either characters or leaders, and we put them back in the cost area. So we're still at three here. We'll now go ahead and activate our draw phase, which we will draw one card, and then we'll go ahead and activate Don phase, which will allow us to pop open two more Don, making us a total of five Don. What we'll do is showcase an effect called Rush. With a cost of two, we'll go ahead and rest two Don to play Sanji. Now, Sanji has a Don X effect. Don X means you need X amount of that Don in order to activate this card's effect. So Don X2 means it needs two Don. What the effect is, it says this character gains Rush. So what Rush means is this card can attack on the turn in which it is played. And we'll go ahead and use the effect Dawn times two, where we'll add two Dawn that are active underneath the Sanji. This unlocks the ability Rush. This gives them a 2000 buff, making Sanji a 6000 strong. Now this also unlocks other effects like Nami, and Monkey D. Luffy. First, we'll go ahead and use Nami's effect. What we'll go ahead and do is attach one Dawn to Nico Robin. Nico Robin making her 6,000. Then we'll go ahead and use Monkey D. Luffy's effect that says give this leader or one of your characters one rested Dawn. So we'll take that rested Dawn there and we'll attach it under Monkey D. Luffy. So now that you noticed, we are kind of in the strategy of spreading a little bit wide and swinging in more places being able to swing over mr crocodile here so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and swing nico robin over crocodile at six thousand now he can choose if he wants to counter that or let it go through so because nico robin is targeting crocodile and not the other characters because those are unrested then blue leader has to counter six thousand over five in order to counter six over five, 
Blue's going to have to play some counter moves. So what Blue will decide to do is play a Boa Hancock, a Jinbei, which gives this leader a 2,000 buff. Plus, if you notice, plus 1,000, plus 1,000. That gives him a 2,000 buff, making him 7,000 and allowing him to survive the battle without losing extra lives. Next, we'll go ahead and use Sanji with to swing over again targeting the leader with 6,000 damage. We'll go ahead and showcase the card to you guys which card it is. It is a event card. There is no trigger effect on the card so it goes to hand. In a normal game you do not show that card. Monkey D. Luffy is now going to go ahead and target Crocodile at 6,000. Crocodile is not going to go ahead and counter that, so Crocodile will go ahead and let that go through. The next card is a Jinbei, so there is no trigger effect, so this card goes to hand. For the last Dawn, here's a strategy a lot of people don't really do, but something to keep in mind is sometimes it's good to end your turn with an unrested Dawn for the reason that you could have cards like this as ways to counter. In order to use this card in a counter, um, we'll go ahead and keep this Dawn set as active for now I think we've done enough attacks already and we'll go ahead and go to end phase So now it's blues turn. We will go ahead and use the refresh phase. We will refresh here We will refresh our Dawn We will detach the two Dawn that we used from last turn and put it back into the cost area We will draw a card activate an extra two Dawn so now that your opponent Monkey D. Luffy has suspended characters, this is a good way to get rid of those bodies um, so they can get less swings when it becomes your turn. So what we would decide to do right now is we'll go ahead and attach one Don over to Jinbei and we'll go ahead and target Sanji. Five over four is gonna go ahead and beat it. Um, also to note, if you would like to protect your characters, you can counter them. If we want to use VV, that is a counter plus 1000. And we can use also Frankie, which also has a counter plus 1000 from our hand. And we'll go ahead and use those two to protect our Sanji from dying. So Sanji will stay alive because six is bigger than five on the attempt to swing. Next, we will go ahead and use five Dawn. We'll go ahead and rest five Dawn. One, two, three, four, and five. To play a five drop character, which is going to be Crocodile. Crocodile is going to be a blocker. What a blocker is, essentially, if somebody attacks one of your characters or your leaders, you can use this card to block the attack, essentially. And redirect the attack towards him okay so crocodile will go ahead and swing for an attempt at 5,000 targeting Sanji 5,000 over 4,000 is going to kill Sanji so we'll have to see if there's a way to counter it and in fact there actually is for one cost which we will play so this is where it's good to have unrested Dawn on the opponent's turn so you can use counters like this because in order to use this, you, you need an active Dawn on your opponent's turn. So because they're declaring the attack over your Sanji, we'll go ahead and rest that Dawn over there and use the counter move, which basically says your leader or one of your characters gains plus 3000 power during this battle. So we'll go ahead and put that card in the trash since it's a one-time use. We'll go ahead and use Sanji as the target to give him a 3000 boost, making him 7000 damage. Attacking 7 does not go through, so Sanji stays alive and Crocodile fails to knock out Sanji. And that was a pretty big move because there are no more Dawn to be used. So blue will go ahead and pass turn over to red. Now that it's red's turn, we'll go ahead and use the refresh phase, which will refresh all of our characters and leaders that were rested. Then we'll go ahead and detach all the Dawn from those characters because every time you start a new turn, the Dawn gets all refreshed. So you get to put all the Dawn back and reuse the Dawn however you want on that turn. We'll go ahead and activate the draw phase where we will draw a card. Dawn phase where we activate two extra Dawn, putting this at seven Dawn. We are now at seven, which is really, really strong. So what we'll do in this scenario 
with our cards that we have in hand is we will go ahead and play another Sanji for two. So we have to rest two Don to do that. We're going to go ahead and attach use two Don to go over the Sanji, making him 6,000. And because we put 2,000 underneath him, we'll give this character rush. Sanji being at six, we'll go ahead and target the crocodile leader. So because he's attacking my leader, Blue's going to want us to try to protect and preserve more of that life and not fall way too, too behind since there's only two lives left. In every battle phase, you have to choose if you want to block or not, if you have a blocker, decide whether you want to do that or not, then move on to the counter phase. For this scenario, we'll go ahead and play Jinbei on our crocodile, making him a 7,000 blocker. So seven is going to go ahead and trigger the block and we'll go ahead and block that uh, seven over six so the attack does not go through now that we have another blocked attack i can see that he has less cards in his hand what we'll go ahead and do this time is we'll use one active dawn to attach underneath nico robin and we'll go ahead and swing over crocodile again for six thousand damage Crocodile is not going to be able to respond to that at 5,000. So blue will go ahead and let that attack go through. This one is a Bartholomew uh, character card. This one has a trigger. So we'll go ahead and use this card to trigger. And this effect says play this card. So Bartholomew will be able to play on that life check. Next, we'll go ahead and use Monkey D. Luffy to attack over Crocodile once more at 6,000. Crocodile is going to go ahead and let that go through. The last card is actually going to be a Thrust Pad Cannon. This one also has a trigger effect. This trigger effect says activate this card's counter effect, which counter effect says return one character card with the cost of three or less to the owner's hand. Nico Robin will get returned back to hand and any Don attached to that character goes back to the cost area as rested and what we'll do this part of the game we'll just go ahead and pass over our turn over to our opponent blue gets to start now we'll go ahead and unrest our characters we'll unrest crocodile we'll unrest jinbei we'll unrest all these characters are going to become unrested at this moment we'll, we'll unrest all of these cards here we'll go ahead and draw for one and then we'll go ahead and use our dawn phase where we get to activate an extra two dawn. So we are now at a total of eight dawn, which is plenty, plenty to play with if you ask me. So use two dawn to attach to Jinbei. Jinbei is gonna be at 6,000 and we're gonna use Jinbei to swing over one of the Sanjis. So blue, the six is attacking the four Sanji here. So six on four, what we'll go ahead and do is rest one of our Dawn for a counter move. And we'll go ahead and use guard point here, which has a counter move saying your leader or one of your characters gains 3000 power during the battle. So that'd be our one cost right there. That'll buff up the Sanji to 7,000 over six, protecting Sanji from dying. We'll use two Dawn under Bartholomew Kuma to make him 5,000 and we'll declare to swing over Sanji at five over four again. We'll go ahead and use our last two cards a Nico Robin and another Nico Robin giving him a 2000 buff making him six six will be greater than five So Sanji will stay alive again But now reds in a bit of trouble because red has no more cards in hand. It becomes a little more dangerous here um, one that making him 4,000 knowing that the red player doesn't have any more cards in hand Four attacking over four will be able to be enough to kill a Sanji So we'll go ahead and swing targeting one Sanji Killing Sanji for because if it's equal the attacker still wins and the and the defender loses We'll go ahead and use crocodile so Crocodile will now be at 5,000 and swing over Sanji again to kill Sanji. Sanji being rested will be able to die and the other two Don go back in the Don area. And so now that leaves one Nami left over. What we'll do in this position is use Crocodile's leader effect which says main once per turn 
Don minus four. If you don't know what a Don minus four is, what Don minus four does is it allows you to put four Don cards that are in your field back on top in the Don deck. So we'll go ahead and take off one Don here, two, three Don here, and one Don here. We'll take these four back and we'll put them on the top of our deck and that will allow us to activate its effect. And this one says once per turn, when you don minus four, you can return one character with a cost of five or less back to the opponent's hand. So we'll go ahead and return Nami back to the opponent's hand. Blue will go ahead and pass turn over to red. We'll refresh Monkey D. Luffy. We'll refresh all of the Don. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Do the draw phase where we draw one more card. And we'll also activate another two Don for the Don phase. So we've used draw phase, we used Don phase. Now onto the main phase. So what we're gonna go ahead and do in this scenario is we're gonna go ahead and rest one Don to play this card, Disable Jamble. What Disable Jamble says, for one cost, it says main. Select one of your Straw Hat Crew type leader or character cards. Your opponent cannot activate blocker if that leader or character attacks during this turn. Because Monkey D. Luffy is a Straw Hat Crew type, this will apply to Monkey D. Luffy. Your opponent cannot activate blocker. Next, what we'll do is what we like to call an all-out push. We're going to go ahead and do every, we're going to touch every single active Don underneath Monkey D. Luffy. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight Don is going to be attached under Monkey D. Luffy. That's going to give him an 8,000 buff, making him 13,000. We'll go ahead and use the once per turn effect. Use the rest of Don. So now that we've blasted up our Monkey D. Luffy, we are going to be able to swing over at the Crocodile Leader for 14,000 power to see if Crocodile can block it. And we'll find out. This is basically win or go home right here. Blue has some active Don. So what Blue is going to go ahead and do is rest two of these Don to play a counter move, which is going to be Love, Love, Mellow. This one says your leader or one of your characters gains plus 4,000 during this battle. Then draw one if you have three or less cards in your hand. So we'll give this Crocodile a 4,000 buff, making him 9,000. We're still a little short. But we have three or less cards, so we're going to be able to draw through the Love, Love, Mellow's effect. We're going to go ahead and play Pacifista, making Crocodile 10,000 on a counter move. We, looks like we do not have anything else in hand that will be able to protect us since I cannot play Love, Love, Mellow because I only have one more active Dawn. If I had another active Dawn, then I would be able to play this, making him 14,000. But it looks like Blue does not have enough for the attack. Crocodile cannot block, so he is now out of it. And that is game. And Red Monkey D. Luffy wins this match. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this game. That is essentially how you play One Piece. It's about attacking each other's characters to gain advantage, attacking each other's leaders to get ahead. And if you saw, there was almost two different play styles happening in this matchup. One was all about building and going very aggressive and swinging over the leader almost all the time. And the other one was just building up a wide board and trying to protect itself for the end game. Unfortunately, Blue did not expect this red option card to stop his blocker from blocking. So if you like this video, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. I know it's one of the longer videos, but this is all for you to kind of help you learn and understand how the game works. There's basically a lot of important stuff in every single turn that kind of happened and it worked out in a fun, interesting way. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below or if you're still confused on certain things, I'd be happy to help you out. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys on our Discord where we're gonna be teaching you how to play this card game on our Discord and help you practice and get a little bit better so we can prepare for tournament, competition, casual play. See you all in the next video. Take care, bye.